Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be solving an equation. It's a polynomial equation and it's degree five, meaning that it has five roots. Now we have a special guest here today. The, the letter I is in the question, which essentially means that we're going to get complex roots. And that's why the letter Z is being used, the variable Z instead of X, although you can sometimes use X if you want to. So the way we do this is we, especially when you're up into the higher powers, it's good to turn everything into polar form. So let me show you how to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a handle on the picture of this particular complex number. So on the right hand side, this is actually a complex number. And what it says is from the origin, I'm gonna walk six units to the right and 16 root three units up. So I'll head over to the right and then up, maybe I land here. So that point represents this complex number. This is the real line and this is the complex line. So the first value on its own is the real value, just like any number. And the 16 root three is along the I axis or the complex axis. This is called an Argand diagram. So I'm gonna connect it up as a triangle refer to the x-axis because a lot of you would be taught this referring it to the x-axis and so that creates a 90 degree angle so this is 16 and this is 16 root 3 and that looks really familiar to I know a lot of you that looks like a special triangle right if that was a 1 a 2 a root 3 then you would know the angles on the inside because it's a special triangle so all, we, all they've done there is they've scaled it up by a factor of 16. So you can see here that this here is going to be 32. So it's normally a 1, 2, root 3, but it's just been scaled up by a factor of 16. Why is that important? Well, it tells me that the, the radius of this, which is the distance from the origin to the, to the complex number, it's actually called the modulus, is 32. And also I need to know the angle of rotation right here. And because that's a special triangle, I know that's pi over three. Okay. So the two real critical numbers I need are the R and the theta. What I can do now is rewrite this complex number in R cis form. Okay. So I'm going to write that as 32 cis we can talk about what that is in a second, cis of the angle, which is pi over three. All right, so since I've written that in polar form, I have to write the left-hand side in polar form, which is r cis theta all to the fifth power. How do we proceed from here? Well, we wanna make some equations mirror, mirror on the wall, but before we do, we get to take advantage of something called de Morey's theorem which is a proven theorem and it tells us that we can take the the power of five and write it as a coefficient here on theta so that can be written equivalently as r to the five cis five theta and then that allows us to make some equations right i'm just gonna say that's equal to that so if r to the five is 32 then for our answer our roots the R that we want is actually two because two to the five is 32. Okay, and also I can make an equation on the arguments. So that means that five theta is equal to pi by three. So five theta is equal to pi by three. Okay, so now we have five theta equals pi over three, but I know I have five answers. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna generate the other four by adding multiples of the period. So we go around and around, and we know that one full rotation is two pi radians, so that's all we do. So we take five pi, just leave the five there for a second, we'll bring it in a second, and we take pi over three, and then we're also going to generate the next one by adding two pi. Well, two pi is six over three. So six over three plus one over three is seven pi over three. And then I'll add six again, that'll give me 13 pi over three. And then I add six again, that gives me 19 pi over three. And I'm counting one, two, three, four. Oh, I need five, so you just add it again. So I get 25 pi over three. That's what five theta is equal to. 
and then I'll divide through by five, and that means that theta is equal to uh, pi over 15. That's gonna be for the first root. That will be the argument for the first root. And the argument for the second root is this one. I'm simply taking the denominator and multiplying it by five. 19 pi over 15 and 25 pi over 15. I'll just keep them in, in that form. Okay, so what's good now is look, for my answers, my five answers, they'll all have the same radius. They'll all have the same modulus. So the first answer, I'll just call it Z1, is going to be, it's always written in R cis form. So R is two, and I write cis times the argument theta, which is in this case pi by 15. And the second one is gonna be two cis seven pi over 15 and so through the miracle of editing, those are all five answers. Now they look unusual, but these do represent numbers. They're complex numbers. They're written in polar form. And you could, uh, I just want to demystify them. I'll just do one. So I'll take the first one and I'll show you how it could be rewritten back in Cartesian form. What you do is you take, this is the first answer. You simply recognize that C represents the cosine. So two times the cosine of the argument, which is pi by 15, plus the imaginary number i, that's what i is, times the sine of pi over 15. And I'll put a big set of brackets around that because the two has to be distributed through. Anyway, with a little bit of calculator work, it could give you those values and you would have it in Cartesian form as well. All right, there's the video today. If you liked it, don't forget to slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you back here in the next video.